All right, all right. How's everyone doing today? Um, it's kind of a warm, gray, windy, light snow sort of a day here in Colorado. And uh, yeah, it hasn't been a real great winter, honestly. Haven't had much snow, had a lot of wind, a lot of really cold temps, and uh, all that's conspired to make for a very unstable snowpack and, uh, and for some really pretty dangerous avalanche conditions. So honestly, um, up to this point in the year, it's probably the least amount of skiing I've, uh, I've ever shot. Um, anyhow, today we're out on the front deck, so you might see a car go by, you might hear uh, the bus go by a time or two. Um, but anyhow, what I wanna to talk to you guys today a little bit is about is, uh, is my camera. Um, I got the Sony A9 II just about a year ago, maybe 13 months ago, and, um, and it's been my kind of my go-to outdoor sports, wildlife, and uh, in some instances, some landscape as well. Um, so I was going to break down today the good, the bad, um, and kind of give you my take on it. So here we go. So just like a lot of you guys, uh, a ton of my shoots got canceled this year and I just didn't shoot nearly as much as I typically do in a given year. Yeah, so even with a bunch of stuff getting canceled, I, I definitely got the camera out in the field quite a bit for a number of different shoots. Um, I did some, you know, some commercial and editorial shooting for sure. Uh, shot for a couple brands and a few magazines. Um, what else did we do? We shot, you know, and some personal projects as well. Um, I shot backcountry skiing, backcountry wildlife, multi-day backcountry wildlife project. Uh, I shot, uh, what else, trail running, whitewater kayaking. I shot a family trip down the Grand Canyon. That was super fun. Um, and a few other things too. And, and we'll go over that when we look at uh, some of the images on the computer in a little bit. I'm gonna give you a quick uh, you know, background of, of where I'm coming from. I shot Canon for a, many, many years. I've had I don't even know, a dozen Canon cameras. Um, but most recently I was shooting, before Sony, I was shooting the Canon 1DX, the Canon 5D Mark III, and the 7D Mark II. So that's kind of where I'm coming from and how I'm comparing the mirrorless setup uh, to that Canon uh, DSLR setup. Okay, so let's talk about what I like. And first things first is image quality. Um, it's incredible, and as you would expect it to be. And, and honestly, I think just about any modern camera nowadays is gonna have really good image quality, and this is certainly, um, this certainly is true for the A9 II as well. It's crisp, it's clean, it's sharp. Um, I get great highlight and shadow recovery and post-production. Uh, the image quality is, is incredible. It's as good as I could ever ask for. Okay, autofocus. Autofocus on this camera is simply incredible. Um, it locks onto subjects and it really doesn't let go. And I'm gonna even show you some like multiple, you know, what, a 67 shot bursts where every uh, image is sharp and in focus. Uh, it's just really incredible. It's very, also, you can also personalize that, uh, that autofocus system to do it. However you like your autofocus setup, you can do it. It's very customizable. Speed. Um, this camera is fast, really, really fast. Like I said, the, the autofocus speed is really fast to acquire and keep hold of subjects. And then the frame rate as well is just, you know, 20 frames a second. Uh, is, is even more than I need. Now, the, uh, the new Sony A1 has come out, you know, and that's 30 frames a second, which is essentially video. Um, that's, and that's way more than I need. Um, I just, even 20 is too much. I, I tend to double up on shots. Um, and am I getting 20 frames a second? Um, I'm not totally sure I am, but uh, I certainly am not feeling like I'm, I have any gaps in my sequences, that's for sure. So um, yeah, it's really fast and it's gonna do everything you need for your outdoor and action sports shoots. Okay, build quality. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, this is a really well-built uh, camera body. It is very well sealed to moisture and dust and I have put it through the paces there. There's no doubt about it. I've shot it in raging blizzards um, where we're just getting caked with snow. It's snowing two inches, three inches an hour. Um, and I've sh also shot it in the desert where there's sand and dust blowing everywhere. Um, and it, 
you know, I have no infiltration of water or sand or dust or anything like it, that in the camera. So it's a really well-built body. Um, okay, ergonomics and handling, we'll touch up on that a little bit. Um, yeah, it's good. It's got a nice deep grip here. I'm not a huge guy. I don't have giant hands or anything like that, but it fits me very, very well. Um, so as far as ergonomics go, that's it's great. Um, I also really like the button placement. I am, you know, a pretty basic shooter in a lot of ways. I put it in manual and I shoot full manual in raw. And then from there I am adjusting, you know, aperture, ISO and, uh, and shutter speed, of course. And I do that all right here. It's very easy to do with the buttons. But what's really nice is that right on top here is I have access to all my different frame rates from high to medium to low. And I, and I access that a lot. Um, so that's really ha handy to have right there. The other thing I do a ton is I switch between um, autofocus continuous and autofocus single shot. And that button is also right here. And I cycle between these two modes all the time. So really the most important things to me are really front and center and very easy to get to. And I do shoot this camera with gloves more often than not. And it's, it's pretty good with gloves. I feel like, you know, the DSLRs are a little better in that regard. The buttons and dials are all just a little bit bigger. Um, but, it, but it's fine. It works fine with gloves. Okay, let's talk about the menu system. Um, the menus on the Sony cameras are something they seem to get knocked for a lot. But honestly, I don't really have any issue with it. Um, I use the function button here. And within that function button, you can basically put all the uh, all the functions that you're going to use uh, to, on a typical day shoot, and that you can access them right there. So really, I don't even have to dive into the menu system. I just hit this function button, and the things that I'm going to toggle through um, during the course of a typical shoot are right there. So you know, I can switch between electronic and mechanical shutter, super easy. I can go to eye, uh, sorry, eye autofocus on and off, super easy. Animal eye autofocus, super easy. White balance is right there. Uh, they're just the things that I'm gonna use often are very easy to get to. So honestly, I have no issues with the uh, menu system at all. Battery life. This is another thing that I think in the early days of mirrorless, people really did not like about mirrorless and that was the battery life. Um, but now with the newer batteries, and I don't know what these are called there. Oh wait, it says right there. I don't know, lithium ion Z battery. Um, I just don't have any issues with it. I can shoot outside all day in frigid, I mean single degree temps or even sub-zero temps with a single battery. Um, I always have an extra battery with me, of course, but I don't know that I've had to replace my battery on a shoot yet. So battery life is not an issue with this camera at all. It's great. Okay, let's talk lenses real quick. What am I shooting? What lenses am I shooting on the Sony A9 II? Um, I am a Sigma ambassador, so obviously I'm shooting all Sigma lenses. My typical kit includes a 1424, a 2470, a 7200, a 100, 400, and a 150, 600. Those are kind of that's my go-to lens kit, and the, you know some version of that is with me every day that I'm out in the field. Um, more and more the Sigma lenses, we're getting more and more the DGDN, meaning that they are a native mount to the Sony uh, body, so. What that means, I don't need any converters, right? I have the, the body right here, just goes right on. I don't need anything else to go with it. For a few of the lenses that I have, I am using the MC11 converter and, uh, and it's working really well. Um, I can show you some, some examples of me using the MC11 with uh, both the 7200 and the 15600. And it's sharp, it's fast, it's quick. Um, I really don't hesitate to use it at all for any professional applications. Okay, so let's talk about um, some of the issues I have with this camera. Um, and there's not much, but a couple things. Uh, dust. Uh, dust is certainly a thing with the mirrorless cameras. Um, you know, when you go to switch lenses in the field, which I do a lot, uh, it's very easy to get dust in there. So I just make sure that I always have, you know, a couple sensor cleaners with me, sensor swabs, a little, um, you know, a little rocket blower and you know i just make sure to keep it clean when i'm out in the field um, not that big of a deal but i do wish they had some sort of a cover and i think the new a1 has that so when you are switching lenses a little cover kind of comes over the sensor so it doesn't get all mucked up in the field so that's one thing um, the other thing i don't really that kind of drives me nuts is where the lens re release button is and it kind of sits in here 
Um, on my cannons, it was always on this side, on the outside, and it was really easy to change the lens. You could just pop it off. You could hold two lenses, pop it, change it. It was super easy. With this one, it's just a little harder to get to, and it's just a little more awkward. Um, maybe that just takes some getting used to. I don't know, but I bet everyone that has moved from Canon to Sony would love to see the lens release button on this side. Um, what else? Uh, it is a little bit laggy. Uh, when, when you, you know, you're starting in the off position and you turn it on, the time it takes to fire up and get, you know, the viewfinder going and everything working, it takes, I don't know, a couple seconds. It's, it's noticeable. When I'm shooting action sports, it's not that big of a deal. Um, with wildlife, it can be a little bit of an issue from time to time. Um, if you're hiking around and all of a sudden you see an animal right there, you know, there's an elk right around the corner you weren't expecting, you fire up your camera and in that two or three seconds, the animal might just take off. Um, so it is a little bit laggy. I would love to see improvements there. I don't know if the A1 um, has made any improvements there or not. And again, it's not a deal break or anything, but it is something to note. Okay, so the bottom line here is that this is a great camera for an outdoor photographer, whether you're shooting uh, wildlife, action sports, even some landscape stuff. Um, this is, uh, it's a great camera for you. It, it really covers all the bases. It's weather sealed, um, so on days like today when it's snowing or raining a little bit, you know, you don't have to worry about it too much. The image quality is amazing. The frame rates are amazing. The autofocus system is awesome. Um, you really can't find too much to fault with this camera, honestly. It's, it's awesome. Um, but yeah, the snow is starting to pick up a little bit here, which is a good thing. It means I'll be hitting the road here probably in the next day or two to go finish up a couple photo shoots, uh, sorry, a couple commercial shoots. Uh, but anyhow, let's go inside. We'll hop in on the computer and dig into some files and I'll show you what exactly I've been shooting with this for the last year. Here we go. Okay, so um, back inside at the computer, we're gonna take a look at some of the files here, kind of show you how I've been using the A9 II. Um, so let's just dive right in. Uh, as you can see here, this is right when I first got it. These uh, ski shots here are probably the very first shots I ever took with the A9 II. Um, here's some more ski stuff. And let's just kind of look at a file here so I can give you guys an idea of, uh, of really what we're looking at. So typical shot, um, I got my skier coming at me at a very high rate of speed. He's flying through the snow, snow's flying everywhere. He's zigzagging all over the mountain. The camera's autofocus picks him up, locks on him, and and we get shots like this. So let's, let's zoom in here and see how sharp it is. Uh, this one was shot with what lens? The 7200, uh, Sigma 7200 S lens. Uh, and that's with the MC11 converter, and it's still uh, that fast and that sharp. So here we are, 200% crop, and it's pretty much perfect. It looks great to me. Um, very, very happy with the image quality here. What else we got? Let's keep on cruising down a little bit here. Um, weather sealing, here we go. This is a shot with uh, Michael Maroney and myself in the Colorado backcountry, and yeah, it was snowing super hard. It was dumping. There's everything is sopping wet by the end of the day, and the camera and the lenses did just fine. The Sony A92 is very well sealed. Um, most of my Sigma lenses are also sealed, so the two of them combined worked really well, and uh, they really just didn't blink uh, when it came to to stormy photography like this kind of stuff. I mean, it was it was snowing real hard. So, uh, what else do we have going here? You know, the other thing that I really like about that autofocus is um, how fast it picks up and engages and locks onto the athlete. So let me find a few of those here. Uh, what are we looking at? Oh, some, some stuff for REI. Uh, something we did for a time. Oh, this is for... Uh, a shoot I did for K2 right before COVID hit up in Canada. We went up there and did a big shoot. And um, I think there's a couple of examples in here that I could probably use. So let's see, something like this. Here we have uh, uh, Lexi coming into the frame here. And you know, where I'm, where I'm set up for my shot, I can't really see where the athletes are. They're kind of back behind the horizon there. So, so I can't see them. 
Um, so I'm just sitting here with my camera. I have a general idea of where they're going to be, but I'm just kind of waiting for the athlete to come through. And as soon as I engage the autofocus, either using back button autofocus or the shutter button, um, it picks up on the athlete instantly, as you can see here. I mean, that's a millisecond or two, half a second after she popped into view. Um, she comes around the corner, and then the autofocus just kind of locks in on her and tracks her through the turn in her air here. So that's super impressive uh, about the, the Sony A92 as well. It's really fast to lock on. Okay, uh, let's see. Keeping on going. Here's another shoot I did for Powder Magazine. Uh, this was before... Uh, let's see, hold on, let's take a look here. So this is also really impressive too. So when you have a bazillion snowflakes between yourself and the athlete, it can be really hard for the autofocus system to stay on the athlete. A lot of times it wants to, to move and focus in, you know, on the snowflakes that are between you and the athlete. But let's look in here and, um, and you'll see just how well it stayed on the athlete who's like essentially hiding behind all that snow there. Um, but it just came out super sharp, just his little goggles peeking above, uh, peeking above the snow there. And there we are back at hundred percent and then all filled in. So, um, yeah, um, the camera and the lens is working together, doing a, 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 an amazing job. Let's go a little bit further down here. Um, uh, let's see. Let's go the other direction, da, da, da. some trail running stuff, some really nice trail running stuff. Oh, here we go. This is what I want to talk about here. This is a multi-day backcountry trip we did uh, last spring. And uh, we were out for three nights, four days. We were shooting all day from, you know, basically sun up to post sundown. And I only brought three batteries with me. So one of the knocks on mirrorless for a long time was that the battery life was really bad. But here we are, uh, four days on a commercial shoot, no less. Well, it's commercial and editorial shoot. And, um, and I had, had all the battery life I could ask for. And, uh, and this shoot was awesome. Boy, did we have a good time. Uh, I mean, who doesn't want to ski sunset deep in the Colorado backcountry with our little our, our little cabin that we were in where it's down here, and we're up here playing on the mountainside at sunset. It's just beautiful. Uh, let's see. There's probably some wildlife in here. Oh, there's some kayaking again. Um, this is a really fun shoot down outside of Crested Butte, Colorado. But again, uh, you know, I can't see the athlete. They're, they're just up in the water. We can't really communicate. It's super loud. You're just underneath this pounding waterfall. The athlete comes paddling in and instantaneously, you know, as soon as I see him and I, and I get on the autofocus, it picks him up immediately and it's super sharp. Um, let's zoom in here and take a look. Here we are at 100%. And we can go even tighter, 200%. And that just looks fantastic to me. I can't really ask for anything more than that in a, in a file like this. Um, uh, this was down in the Grand Canyon, just a quick little uh, bighorn sheep portrait, but this is, you know, it's just, it just looks great. Um, this is with the 100, 400 DGDN. And it's just, just beautifully sharp. Um, and then what else I have? Yeah, so here we are. This is uh, using Animal IAF on this one. It worked pretty well, um, really well, actually. Let me see, let me find this shot. Here's my favorite shot from that whole series. Um, and the other thing too, you know, this is way up at almost 14,000 feet. And I'm just, you know, hiking around in Talus and Scree. It's pretty gnarly up there. Um, but one of the things I really like about the mirrorless system is that it is uh, lighter and more compact than my DSLR system was. Um, so when you're hiking around, you know, whether it's a multi-day backcountry trip um, or even just a big long day trip, it's really nice to, to save a little bit of weight. Um, so another little benefit there. Yeah, so my takeaway on this camera after a year of use is that it's awesome. It does everything that you want it to do. The, uh, Image files are beautiful, the autofocus is fast, the frame rate is fast. Um, what else? It's weatherproof, it's dust sealed, it's sealed from dust. Um, it's a tough body, so anyone, you know, if you're, if you're 
your backpack with you, you're traveling with it a lot, it's going to stand up to a lot of the So yeah, if you're shooting sports and shooting wildlife, this is going to be pretty much for the album. So I'm going to leave it there for now. And uh, I'm sure I forgot something or forgot to, you know, touch on some aspect of the camera or whatever. Um, but if you guys do have any questions at all regarding uh, the Sony A92 or any of the Sigma lenses that I've been showing you guys and, uh, and that took all these pictures, uh, just hit me in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them as soon as possible. Um, it's snowing now, so I'm going to wrap it up and go hit the mountain and go do a little skiing. And uh, we'll just see you on the mountain.